And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about it's a different cock of the radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing whacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Talk. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program on this Flash Friday. Flash Friday, everybody. Headlights on wherever you are. Turn them on right now. Saw lots of headlights on during the day today here in Los Angeles. Wherever you are, turn the headlights on. If it's nighttime where you are, turn the high beams on. Do what you got to do. Show your loyalty to the Tom Likas show. Let the people in the other cars know you are a listener. Let them know you are a supporter. Let them know you are a believer. And let them know you like knockers. Ladies, if you see somebody with the headlights on, you know what to do. Reward their loyalty to the Tom Likas show by showing them your rack. Thrust them out, girls. Let them breathe free. Pop them out the window. Send them up uh, through the sunroof. Hang them out the back of the flatbed. You do what you got to do. Let's see your cans, girls. We flash you. You flash us. It's that simple. Here it is. It's Friday on the Tom Likas Show with wide open telephones. We can talk about anything at all. Anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game. long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. It's that simple. All you do is call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. And if you're calling from another country, maybe you... Uh, you know, I've tried to call the 800 number. It hasn't worked for you. There is an international number as well. I use the country code 1. The area code is 323. And the phone number is 520-6211. That's 1-323-520-6211. It's that simple. Pretty soon you'll be talking to uh, to our Italian screener out there. You just dial right in. He'll probably hang up on you five times before he talks to you. You know, because he believes in, like, clearing the lines. Let's just clear the lines. But uh, just keep trying. He will eventually get you on the air. No doubt about it. Have you seen the latest, by the way, on Ed McMahon? Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, according to documents on uh, Smoking Gun which have been uh, referred to on TMZ.com. Let's get all the Time Warner-owned websites that are mentioning all this stuff uh, out of the way so that we don't get blamed later by Ed. But it says here that uh, in addition to American Express being owed $750,000 by Ed McMahon and his lovely wife, now it says here Citibank has filed suit against Ed McMahon alleging that he owes them Roughly $180,000 on top of uh, what they allegedly owe uh, American Express. So uh, it's just getting worse. Ooh, baby. Pretty amazing stuff. I don't know. That's embarrassing. But by the same token, it's like uh, it's what I tell people all the time on this program that you got to live within your means, folks. Got to do it. Got to do it. <laughs> I just don't get it. I do not understand why people cannot live within their means. I don't know what the problem is. This week on the Tom Likas show, some of the issues we talked about, in case uh, 
in case you missed it or in case you forgot or in case there was something you wanted to add to these. Of course, Ed McMahon's wife and her shopping habit, according to TMZ.com. Then um, we talked about uh, the new word, the new buzzword down there using chore play. Get your wife to have sex with you by doing the chores around the house. How do you feel about that, boys? We talked about that. We talked about the fact that Michelle Obama appears to be more popular than Cindy McCain at this point. Who cares who the candidates are married to? Doesn't really matter. We talked about that. We talked about the 16 girls who all got pregnant at the same time at Gloucester High School in Gloucester, Massachusetts. They made a secret pact to all get pregnant at the same time. Jesus. Um, I give a little update from the Child Free Front. Letting you know how those of us who are child free are enjoying life. While you are busy trying to pay your mortgage and while you're going to Walt Disney World this summer to swelter. What the child free are doing this summer. We had a special edition of Like Us 101 this week for gays and lesbians. Yes, we did. Because a lot of gays and lesbians are afraid now they're going to get pressured into marriage. We got a lot of calls from them, too. Zane Lamprey of the TV show Three Sheets was here. We were talking about booze. And uh, uh, you just heard uh, the beginning of the program. My uh, attempt to drink something called Viper Rum, which was rum that contained a dead snake. I wasn't very successful at getting any of that down. And, of course, we had D.L. Hughley here at the studio this week. So it was a very busy week on the program. Lots of stuff happened. And uh, now your telephone calls are coming up next at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. We can talk about these issues or anything else that's on your mind. Tom, Tom Likas. Like 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Yeah! Flash Friday, the Tom Likas show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Hey, Seuss. On the Tom Likas show, Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Hey, Dad, I was going to uh, talk about the Lakers. Absolutely. Hey, Suze, by the way, is listening to the online stream in San Antonio. Yeah. I actually started listening to you in Colorado Springs, and uh, they shut you off over there, those holy uh, Bible dudes, you know. They don't, oh. like, they don't like you too much out there. Well, these things happen. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I was I was thinking about it, and, you know, the Celtics, you know, they took, uh, well, Atlanta took them to uh, seven games, and so did the Cavs. You know, to me, it almost seemed like uh, the owner kind of wanted them to go to seven games, you know, just to make some money. I mean, they've been out of the playoffs for so long. What do you think about that? I don't believe that. Uh, I don't believe that for one minute. Um, you run a real risk playing that game because someone's got to say something. Yeah. Someone's got to speak up. Yeah, you know, and it just kind of seemed a little odd, you know, that they went seven games with, with Atlanta, the Cavs, you know, and then the Pistons, they kind of took them out in six, I think. And, I mean, the Lakers didn't show up to play in the first place, so. Well, then yeah. that explains why the others went seven and uh, the, the finals did not. Yeah, you know, and I, I it just, it, it kind of bothered me because I stopped watching basketball a while back. You know, I was, I was a big fan, but after that, uh, the Kings series a couple years ago, you know, ever since then, I, I just kind of was a little weary about the NBA at that point. But well, you got a good team in San Antonio. I don't know uh, why you would stop watching. My goodness, to be able to watch Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili and Tim Duncan every night? Wow. Oh, man. I, <laughs> and I, I the NBA's the... oldest player, Bruce Bowen? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like this person at all, man. I'm probably the only person in San Antonio that doesn't like him and, and is Mexican. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, I'm not a big fan myself. I actually, you know, I, I did watch the finals because of the Lakers because I, I really like Kobe and I really wanted to see him win without Shaq, you know. But, you know, I don't know. Celtics, I don't know. They just they kind of bothered me. Just wanted to see what you thought about that. Nah, you know what? I don't believe any of these conspiracy theories. I really don't. I mean, the NBA uh, did uh, root out the, uh, the referee who was uh, dishonest. And, uh, you know, now he's going to pay the price for that. Yeah. But um, I I think the NBA is very closely scrutinized. I, I think that um, there are too many media nowadays. There's too many places to tell your story if you're aware of some shenanigans going on. Yeah. Think of all the people who would have to be involved in some kind of a scam like that. Somebody would, would tell. 
Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you know, the top players would probably have to be involved, which would be hard for me to believe that Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen and Paul Pierce would be involved in something like that. I mean, they're, you know, they're... Well, like, if it's hard for you to believe, why are you calling up and suggesting it? Well, you know, because it still seemed like it, you know, I mean, Ray Allen didn't show up to play till the Pistons, and then Kevin Garnett, you know, he was having a hard time... uh defending for a while there I, I don't know you know and it just it just seemed really really strange and the whole foul calling how lopsided it was but i know you talked about that and you, you mentioned how they were attacking the, the court, and you, you know, notice when the lakers started attacking the basket a little more they got more free throws yeah it's true you know and and i mean the lakers just kind of screwed up but you know anyways um, well, anyways, that, that's all i have can you take me out lace peterson style with a thank you jesus that would be tasteless but i guess we can Thank you, Jesus. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, that's our telephone number. Maria, on the top like his show. Hello. Hi. How are you? Ah, uh, but do you care, darling? Good. Not <laughs> I really, was, um, I guess. I need your help on something. I just wanted your advice. You are a male. I want your advice. Um, I've known a guy about three weeks already. For the next two weekends, he has set some dates up for us. And I was just wondering if it would be, um, I don't know, um, very easy of me to give my to give it up on the third date if I'm wanting something serious with this guy. Do you think it'll be okay, or should I wait a little bit longer? No, I don't think, well, put it this way. If he's a one-on-one -on -one student, you're not going to have the option of waiting any longer, but I don't know if he is or isn't. Uh, but I will tell you that um, when I had long-term relationships, virtually all of them, the women slept with me within three dates, many of them on the first date. Oh, really? Yes, okay. because you know what? The reason I was interested in people was not how long it took for them to give it up, uh -huh. but whether they were good in the sack, whether I was having fun. Uh -huh. oh, Those okay. were the important things. So just let myself loose then. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, do you want do you want to have sex with him? I sure do. I wanted to on the first date, but I'm like, oh, it was kind of iffy. I'm like, oh, I want I don't want this guy just to, you know, here you go, thank you, bam, and that's it. You know, so I was kind of nervous. I'm like, mm, maybe if I hold down a little bit, maybe that'll show him that I'm interested in more than just this. Yeah, you know? but the point is, if you're showing him that you want more than just this, he, he, I, I tell you why. At this point, this mm -hmm. is what he wants. And he uh -huh. can't decide what else he wants until he knows that he's enjoying having uh, sex with you. Oh, okay. Men think differently than women. You know, women, they, they do it the other way around. You see if you like a guy, uh -huh. and then if you like him, maybe you'll have sex with him. Uh -huh. uh, unless the guy is really, really hot, and then you don't think about that. Um, but if the guy's like average looking or a nice guy, whatever, you're going to make him jump through hoops. Uh -huh. <laughs> but the reality is the guy... He can't decide how he feels about you until he's had sex with you. Oh, okay. It's like test driving a car. Mm -hmm. I, I would not want to have a relationship with someone with whom I had no chemistry. Yeah. And okay. so if I went three dates and somebody was showing no signs of sleeping with me, it would indicate to me that there's no chemistry. Uh-huh. Okay. And so I would start looking elsewhere. Oh, okay. <laughs> you should well, also know the you. longer you wait, if you think he's really a great guy, the longer you wait, the more likely it is someone will pick him off. Oh, okay. You, you think you're Makes the sense. only? Do you think you're the only person he's dating? Um, you'd like to think that. I like to think that, but who knows? <laughs> he's a guy. Yeah. Yes, it's a guy. So. Chances are he's dating others. He's seeing you only once a week. That leaves six other days. Mm -hmm, true. He's because not, every day he'll call me like three or four times every single day ever since I met him. So I'm like, wow. Well, anybody who's got speed dial on their phone knows how easy it is <laughs> to call several people three or four times a day. Uh-huh. My, yeah, my BlackBerry, I hit the first letter of somebody's name and it dials them. Wow. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm doing it right now. Oh, my goodness. You could too. <laughs> oh, Yes. <laughs> I okay. just pick up the phone and I press the letter A and look, it's Art's phone blinking over there. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> it's that simple. So now okay. after after I tell Art I love him, I can then hit the G. 
<laughs> Why, look. Yeah. Here comes Gary Zabransky. His phone's about to light up now. Uh-huh. And okay. I can tell him I love him, too. <laughs> and then, then, I, then I hit the W. The W. The <laughs> yes. And look who comes in. It's, it's, it's uh, well, it's Dean J. D'Amelio. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, that's no, oh, but yeah, you're you're right. Okay, that's how it works. So believe me, it, it's just like text messaging. Okay. <laughs> Do you know how many times I've had twelve windows open on the screen? Oh my goodness! And somebody times? says, "What time did you get home?" Oh, about eight. And then what happens is, I try to get all the conversations to about the same point in the conversation. I just start cutting and pasting. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, about okay. eight. About eight. About eight. About eight. About eight. About eight. Fine, 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 fine. Wow. <laughs> I mean, with okay. technology, it's real easy to do that. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Who I else know. are you talking to? Nobody, 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 nobody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, You're the only I, one. You're the only one. You're the only one. You're the only one. Yeah, they can. Yeah. Right. Okay. So never, ever assume okay. that you're the only one. Not until he's had sex with you. What? How do you have a monogamous relationship if yeah, there's no right. agamy? <laughs> yes, you're right. It's totally right. How can he be loyal to you if he's never had sex with you? That's true. You got a point there. So yeah. he's 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 gonna believe me. He's gonna try everything that's out there until he finds something he likes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So my recommendation: if it's a third date, you're hot for him. You're not going to lose anything by having sex with him on a third date. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Let me know how you make out. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we've made out, but, you know, it's just well, like... it's not what like I was he saying. To go to, he seems he wants to go to that point, but I'm like, oh, put the brakes. You know, but I guess I'm going to stop putting him off now. <laughs> uh, that, uh, that's what I would do if I were you, Dick. Oh. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, let me know if you make out. Oh, I oh, you already did. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate the call. There she goes. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here comes Mark on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's up, dude? Not much. Hey, man. I just wanted to find out what you thought about the draft today. I know that the Kings are looking at either Doty or Bogosian. Who do you think they're going to get? Well, I, I have not seen the draft today. The NHL draft is going on, I think, right now, as a matter of fact. Yeah, it's like about now. But uh, the word on the street is that it's going to be a defenseman named Drew Doty. That's that's what I have heard, but I don't know. Uh, who knows? The draft may have happened already, or that particular pick. I, I just don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's probably well, on, I, I think it's on like? Versus. Hmm? I'm sorry, what's that? I think it's on the Versus. Is it on Versus today? I think it's on Versus. I guess I've been trying to find a live stream, but I can't seem to find Oh, wait, online. look at this. It starts at 4 p.m. Pacific time, so... Uh, ah, okay. Yeah, depending on what time you're listening to the show, it either already happened or it's about to happen. Right. Do you have a favorite that you like? Well, I, you know, here's the thing. I, most of the, uh, the the clips I've seen of these guys playing are on, like, YouTube. So you right. see three minutes of them skating up and down the ice. Uh, yeah, you really have to depend on that central scouting uh, report that uh, comes out in the NHL. Right. And Steve Stamkos rated number one, and everybody says Tampa Bay is going to take him number one. Unfortunately, yes. Doty is rated number two, but uh, Bogosian also could be picked number two. And what reason the Kings would have picking one over the other, I guess you'd have to ask the general manager, uh, who, of course, is Lombardi, and uh, we don't know what he's going to do. Yeah, he's very, very tight-lipped about everything and won't really tell us very much, unfortunately. Well, the first uh, test for the Kings is whether or not they're going to trade any uh, any of the picks they've collected. Right, right. Well, I, I would certainly hope that they would uh, stick with the uh, defenseman in one of these two because they've made traditionally terrible choices in their draft picks over the year by trading them away for like you know people that just suck down the line. So I hope they stay the course and stay young. That's what they need to do. Well, the problem, uh, my problem with the Kings' uh, plan uh, to talk hockey for one moment here is that um, now I'm hearing rumors. I saw it in more than one place that uh, now they're going to trade, I'm hearing, Mike Camilleri. Yes. Who, you know, this is one of the young players we were told they were rebuilding around and we got to wait for these guys to develop. Right. And I guess now this guy is developing his way towards free agency and so they're just going to get rid of him. 
Yeah, there's all kinds of rumors that he's very unhappy for some reason because of the arbitration thing last year. And uh, so there's just been all kinds of talk of that they're going to try and move him. Well, my um, concern I, is that the Kings continue to stay young. And when a player gets to 26 or 27 years old and he's heading towards free agency, they just get rid of him and replace him with another 20-year-old. And yeah. they just keep playing that game of being like the Montreal Expos used to be in baseball or the Kansas City Royals. These teams that uh, bring up all these players and then send them off. How many f f former Kings players did you see in the Stanley Cup playoffs this year? Well, let's see. There was uh, there's quite a few, wasn't there? Brad Stewart's name is on the Stanley Cup now. Yeah, yeah, I bet he was happy he was traded, wasn't he? But that's that's what I'm talking about. My fear is that they're going to go in that direction of constantly rebuilding and never yeah. actually building anything. Yeah, well, they seem to be, from what I can read in, on, in the top and all that stuff, that they they want to stay the course and they're going to stay young and they're going to try and rebuild. Well, I, think I know they say so. that, but they yeah. I, I must say, and I, I love the folks over there dearly and they've been so wonderful to us, but but they have raised ticket prices after not making it to the playoffs for six years. And that's pretty yeah. outrageous. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's pretty outrageous. And uh, I just got my bill in the mail, and uh, my bill for two tickets exceeded $10,000 for the first time. And I must say I was shocked huh. when, when you consider the quality of what you get. That's right. I like hockey, and I would be happy to watch a young team play, but... I think that if a team is not making the playoffs, that you owe it to the fans to hold the line on ticket prices. Absolutely. I totally agree. Totally agree. Anyway. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Tom. I appreciate your uh, your insight on that. Let's hope that the Kings can uh, start to turn it around here. And, and well, like, uh, I'm hoping so. I do believe Dean Lombardi is good at what he does. Hopefully he gets a chance to do what he does best. Thanks for the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. From Hollywood, my name is Tom Likas. Flash Friday, headlights on everybody. Headlights on, ladies. Show us your knockers. If you see a nice pair of knockers, call in. Give us a full report here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866-DAN on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing okay. I'm a second-time caller, long-time listener. I wanted your advice on something. I'm uh, divorced three years. I was taking a cyber class online, and I met this woman, and we established a little bit of a, you know, cyber relationship. Now she wants to meet. She lives up in That Napa. means you had your drawers around your ankles? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, exactly. Okay. She's up in Napa. I'm down here in Los Angeles. She wants to meet halfway. She's my age. The only trouble is the fly in the ointment is she's married. Oh, boy. What is your... I've never knowingly had an, an, an affair with a married woman. Aren't you worried about uh, her being trailed or caught? No. You're not. I'm not, I'm not worried about that, no. So you're not worried that uh, she's married to a nutcase with a gun? No. Really? Why not? Well, just based on the conversations I've had with her, he seems pretty oblivious to her, you know, well, she's daytime gonna, life. She's going to tell you that. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, remember, until you meet somebody in person, whatever they tell you on an instant message is baloney. You, you know, why, why would you believe the stuff people say? You never know if you're talking to the FBI or a 16-year-old girl. You don't know who you're talking to. Right. Really, you don't. Now, think about it this way. Does she have a cell phone? Yes. She talks to you on her cell phone? Yes. Isn't there a bill? Yes. Right. And every time she dials your number, whose number is on the bill? My number. Right. How often does she call you? Well, we text each other a lot, so I, I think that would show up on the bill as well. So. Right. And you're telling me you don't have the least concern about that? Well, that's why I'm, I'm sort of nervous about I must have been nervous or I wouldn't have called you. I don't want to, you know, wake up to a shotgun. Well, you damn well you don't. So it's something to think about. Now, after you think about that, where are you going to go to meet her? Well, she wants to meet halfway, which is like Big Sur, Monterey, sort of. No, or, that's not halfway. That's one-third of the way for her and two-thirds of the way for you. All right, so what are you saying, Morro Bay or San Luis Obispo? Or? Further south. Uh, I know the exact halfway point. And the reason I know the exact halfway point is because I've driven to the Napa Valley many, many times. Right. 
And there is a town that is exactly halfway between Los Angeles and the Napa Valley. And it, it is called Hanford, California. It is an exit on I-5. And it is an exit on I-5, I might tell you. And the reason I know about it is because when I have driven to Napa and I decided to split it up over two days, I have stopped there and found hotel rooms for $79 a night. Nice. And it's nothing, this town is little more than a freeway exit. So I would say it's a place where people are not likely to run into you. Right. You're not likely to see people you know. By the way, Monterey, you might see anybody. People are driving around in the summertime. Who knows who'll be there? Right. Monterey, and it, Carmel. And it's 80 bucks a night for a hotel room, or as opposed to 75 bucks in Hanford for a Motel 6 or something. Uh, there's a Comfort Inn there. There's uh, a Best Western. There's a bunch of local motels there. And that beats the Big Sur romantic thing. You don't want to get all romantic anyway for a little bit. This isn't anyway. romance. It's banging. Right. And it did, that that's halfway. It's about 160 miles from L.A. And it's about 160 miles from Napa? Approximately, yes. Perfect. It's right in between. Well, thank you so much for the advice and just make sure she's not being tailed. Is that it? I certainly would if I were you. Hang on a second. Justin, what did you want to say to Dan here? I wanted to ask if he's ever seen her photograph. Yes, I have. How do you know it's her? I don't. I just, I'm, I'm so curious. I'm not, I'm not knocking you. I had a friend that did no, that. There's a and, lot of things I don't know, and, I, and a lot of things I have to just take on faith. And, and I, you I know, friend, when you're, you, you wanted me to, to be there while well, he met a gal that he met online, and he was starting to get really infatuated with her, and it was, all he was infatuated with was his own creation. And this gal walked in, and I was sitting at a, a table a few tables away and this gal walked in and she was 350 pounds and i had well she's so admitted that she's a little chubbier than normal she's admitted that to me a but, little you know, chubbier than normal i've seen it in the pictures but my ex-wife was a beast and she yeah, you have no idea the uh that i have a really wide range of acceptability in my life let me ask you a question dan if you're not married why do you have to settle for somebody who lives 320 miles away 400 miles just, away, I'm whatever. Really settling. I'm adding a bow to my quiver. But you have to go that far to find somebody who'll have sex with you? Well, for in the, in the uh, uh, you know in the efforts of full disclosure, I used to be in the adult film business, so I've had my share of eighteen, nineteen, twenty year olds. But I've had to hold a camera while I was banging them, and this would be I'd get two hands on her and no camera. No, no way. You're telling you're going to need two hands. Banging a model to a. To a, a supermodel, to a, not a, I mean, porn stars. No, they were models. whores. They weren't supermodels. To, now you're going to bang a boat? I might, yeah. What's wrong? I, I, I'm wondering the same thing. Hey, Todd, what do you want to say to Dan here? Hey, whatever happened to the male honor code, man? Why are you wasting your time with this broad that's 300 miles away, that's married, that's nothing but drama when there's, the population of women is enormous. You don't got to waste your time with that. And as far as just the male honor code point of it alone, why are you messing with some other some other guy's girl anyway? Well, uh, she's not uh, having any sex with him, according to her. Again, I know Tom. Everything she says is probably BS, but she's not having sex with him. That doesn't matter. That's still his girl. No matter what they got going on, they're married. You know, you should just side and let it be. So run away, run very far away is what you're saying. Run away. Get a single girl that's like that, but that's not married, dude. It's, there's, there's no reason to, to go into that, down that street. I was sort of looking at the married thing as a plus because then she's not going to get all hung up on me if she meets me. But that's wrong. If she's not having sex with him, what if she decided to leave him for you? <laughs> she, she's... Um, I'm what a if she? Bachelor. What if she I'm, went home to him? And the point is, no matter how confirmed you are, you know, I I once did something bad with a married woman, and do you know she went home and told her husband that she was in love with me and left him? Uh oh. <laughs> and then uh, you know, got her own place, and like she waited until we could be together, which was never going to happen. Right. That's right. And all of a sudden, two years down the road. You're the sucker that's not getting laid, and she's driving 300 miles to some other guy. By the way, these women who are online, 
They, they've got ten of these going at one time. No, I didn't meet her on like an online thing. I met her in a in a, uh, a virtual chat. classroom. We a, were in a it's class a chat together. room. It's the same thing. No, not a class. It was a classroom. What do you mean it's a classroom? It, it was it was the internet. We both got new jobs, and part of the training program was a virtual classroom. So she's in a she's in a, a legitimate business that was we were learning for uh, you know continuing education. I see that. <laughs> continuing right to a motel room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I get the gist. It's pretty much, you know, don't break the code and uh, don't mess around with married women. I'd be uh, personally uh, beyond any uh, male code of honor. I am concerned about what a married man will do when he finds my phone number on his cell phone bill uh, 70 or 80 times or my text messages. Um, all he has to do, by the way, uh, even if she grabs the bill out of the mailbox, go right to the website AT&T.com, Sprint.com, and log on, and it's all right there for him to see. And what happens then? I guess then I'm going to wake up to a shotgun. You you could very well. Christo, what did you want to say to Dan? I think he's full of baloney. He's been in the adult industry, and he acts like he, this is all new to him. There's some more, a lot more to this than than that. I think he's not telling us the whole story because he he says that he used to bank eighteen and nineteen year olds. I don't believe a word he says. I think he's 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 pulling our leg. There's some more to that. Hello. Yeah, I'm there. I'm listening to you, but uh, I don't know what I've said that made you doubt what I'm talking about. I'm telling you well, the the God's honest truth. Well, yeah, you said that you were in the adult industry and you were banging eighteen and nineteen year olds. Yeah. Uh, so why would you want to, you know, if you go around with those young girls and these fine-looking girls, why would you want to go 300 miles I don't go and, out with the young girl. girls. I hire the young girls. I'm not going out with them. They're coming over. I'm holding a camera. It's a one-handed bang-out. Listen, you can do that without holding the camera. I think you're full of baloney. There's a lot more to it than you're not telling us. Well, you actually, know, it's called POV, and part of the it's point of view, part of the whole thing is I am holding a camera. And when a lot of these girls, when you put the camera down, they stop having sex with you. They want to be on in the movies. So when you're holding the camera, they'll have sex with anybody, even you. Even you, Christo. Greg, what did you want to say to Dan? You know what, man? Uh, I just want you to listen to me real quick, bro. I got to tell you this. I was trying to hang out with this chick. She's way, way, way fine. And she told me that she was separated from her guy. So I said, hell no, I'm not doing it. That's just the man code, man. I don't want to deal with any guy that's even, even a separation. So what I did was I let her alone. She calls me about six months later and says, we're completely divorced. It's over, yada, yada. So I've been going to her house, going to her house. And then one night, all of a sudden, she wanted to go to a hotel. Well, I thought that was kind of strange. I also thought it was strange that there were a bunch of text messages coming in while we were watching the movie. Uh, we were watching The Hammer down at the movie theater. And I said, who's that? Oh, that's just my friend, what not, you know. What it was, was, was it was that husband, who she never actually got divorced from, calling her from inside her own house. Oh, my God. Thanks a lot for the calls. The Tom Likas Show.